Okay. Do you think a Christian can become a police officer? It's very interesting. All of you who are police officers, stay where you are for a minute and you'll answer this. With the power to kill if necessary, having such powerful position in this worldly kingdom, which according to Scripture is not of our own. Now the person who asked the question apparently has in mind the fact that we are not of this world and that the police are of the world system. And so the question comes, can a Christian be a police officer and particularly adding the problem of having the power to kill if necessary? First let me say this. It is wrong to confuse human government with a world system. Human government was invented by whom? God. God is the one who began the process of government. Back in the book of Genesis, God gave the right of capital punishment to government. And we just read a portion that where God Himself states a life for a life. So the idea of government was given by God for the protection of good men and the punishment of evil men for the preservation of society. So in the purest sense, human government is not a part of the world system. The term that we use, I think, so freely and most of the time accurately, the world system, has to do with the evil corruption of Satan in the world. But human government is an institution of God. We would not say that marriage is the world system. We would say marriage is an institution of God, but it has been corrupted by the world, right? So is human government. Probably the biggest problem going on today in law enforcement is to try to find people who will be faithful to their duty. I was talking to an individual the other day about some of the corruption in Chicago, talking about some of the police force. And some of the policemen were actually bought off as hitmen in Chicago and are recently being put on trial for this. The problem that arises in law enforcement is that the corruption of sin has seeped in to a God-ordained institution. I'm convinced that what we really need on the police force are more Christians, not to eliminate them because I think they have the highest level of ethical responsibility. And you say, but what about the right to kill, or what about that? Doesn't that violate the standards of the Scripture? Turn to Romans 13. And Romans 13 gives us a good picture of the relationship that we are to have to government. And you say, well, you know, the Scripture says here, let every soul be subject to the higher powers. There's no power but of God. The powers that be are ordained of God. Whosoever therefore resists the power, resists the ordinance of God, and they that resist shall receive to themselves judgment. You say, well, that's a different government than today. Yeah, you know whose government that was? Nero. Nero's government. The Apostle Paul says, this government is ordained of God. Government as such is ordained of God. It has been corrupted, obviously, but the institution is still ordained of God. Government represents God's rule in the world. It is God's way of ordering society. And even the worst of governments, even if you talk about communism, somehow, some way, even the worst of governments, for the most part, apart from Christian persecution, secure the good and punish the evil. Do they not? Most governments still do that. It is when governments become very intellectualized and very sophisticated and and so forth, like our kind of government, that that becomes a problem and that the courts can't really bring about what should be done justly to the criminals. But notice verse 3, for rulers are not a terror to good works but to evil. You don't have to fear the police if you obey the law. That's what it says. Wilt thou then not be afraid of the power? Do that which is good, and thou shalt have praise of the same. In other words, if you behave yourself, you don't have anything to worry about. Watch, for the policeman here is in view. The man given the power of keeping order in the government is a minister of what? Of God. He carries about a God-ordained function, a minister of God to thee for good. But if you do that which is evil, what? Be afraid. Why? For he bears not the sword in vain. For he is the minister of God, an avenger to execute wrath upon him that doeth evil. Put it in the modern vernacular, he doesn't have his gun for no reason. Now here you see, these men are called the ministers of God and they bear the sword not in vain. 
wherefore you must needs be subject. Not only for wrath, not only because you're afraid what will happen, but because of conscience sake, just because it's what? It's right. God gave them the sword and He gave them the sword to use. And this is to keep goodness prevalent and evil subdued. You'll notice in 1 Peter 2.14, don't look it up, I'll just read it. Governors, we are to be subject to, as unto them that are sent by Him for the punishment of evildoers. That's the police. They are sent for the punishment of evildoers. They do not bear the sword in vain. Yes, I think a Christian can be a policeman. I wish we had more. <laughs> 